It's a beautiful September morning, and we're headed out with the Valdez family, owners of Buckboard Marina and BMF Outfitters. Try some pretty green today. If you fished the gorge this year for kokanee before the September 10th closure, you probably noticed fewer kokanee than in years past. The reason? Well, it's twofold. A couple reasons that likely happened. The wild spawn fish in Flaming Gorge represent from 40 to 80 percent of the um, fish that become adults in the reservoir in any given year. So when that population of fish is missing, it has a big impact on the number of fish anglers are seeing um, when they go fishing. The other big impact, and we've been talking about it for two decades now. You got one? Yep, you got one. The small lake trout out here are just eating a lot of uh, kokanee. We've got a new study that's wrapping up right now that's showing that uh, lake trout, even down to 12 inches, eat kokanee at times. If we're seeing kokanee represented in those fish's flesh. It's a small one. So that means all those fish going up in size are also eating kokanee. But the worst harvesters of lake trout are the kokanee anglers themselves. When they're out here fishing and they bite catch is, you know, you're gonna catch two or three or four pups a day when you're uh, fishing for kokanee and they let them go. They, those people, if they care about the future of their fishery, need to be harvesting those fish. I think I got a laker. They're an opportunistic predator and they're not necessarily eating kokanee all the time. They're eating them when they find the school. They'll take as many as they can. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get back down there so I can get another one. Perfect size. And the issue isn't as much how many kokanee a single small lake trout eats. It's the vast number of small lake trout we have out here. They don't each need to eat very many and have a big impact on the kokanee population. Utah DWR, Wyoming Game and Fish, and Federal Hatcheries slammed it up. Yeah, hit an orange. Combined, stock more than 1.6 million kokanee into the gorge each year. Kokanee! People have asked me, why don't we just stock more kokanee? We're kind of maxed out, aren't we? We'd love to stock more kokanee. The, the bottom line is the facilities of the three agencies were just maxed out. We don't have capacity to stock any more kokanee. And this lower water's not helping. No, this is definitely gonna make it worse. It's gonna make it harder. Well, the kokanee that do wild spawn, the ones that spawning on the cliffs, are gonna be less successful because they're gonna be spawning in uh, gravels that have higher uh, sediment in them. And this area of the reservoir is gonna shrink, so the interaction between predator and prey, lake trout and kokanee is gonna increase. Oh, it's little. Baby. About yep. time, baby. Oh, look at that! Oh, hey. Good job, baby. What are you talking about? What'd you have on there, Chubb? No, just some uh, gulp maggots. You grabbed it. And a nice eating pup. Yeah, Fish like this eats uh, quite a few kokanee. The kokanee this fish eats just makes fewer fish for the angler to catch, so catch some fish and save some cokes. It's a good slogan. It seems to me that we're getting to a point that we got to maybe take some drastic actions if this kokanee population continues to slide. We are, and, and we're talking about it internally, and it's not going to be popular with anglers, but we may have to look at doing some net removal. Um, of these fish, much like they did in Blue Mesa and are doing in Blue Mesa, which was wildly not popular with anglers down there. But it's, it's like, what do people want? You know, you want a lake full of really skinny lake trout? It feels like a kokanee. Or do you want a balanced lake of kokanee and lake trout? I mean, the trophy lake trout anglers need to understand when the kokanee are gone, their trophy fishery is gone. The lake trout will be out there, they'll be really long, but they'll be really thin. The kokanee are the primary food source that sustains that trophy fishery. Once it's gone, that's it. Welcome back to Flaming Gorge. You know, targeting lake trout can be difficult for some, but in a few weeks, these fish come shallow. 
<laughs> and the bike picks up. Oh no, he got off. Rob. Oh God! There's a really fun window coming um, for small lake trout. The small lake trout, the ones 24 inches and less, we're finding are going up into the cliff habitats and the steep gravel slopes um, around the reservoir, mostly on the east side, but there's some spots on the west side from about the 10th of October into November. It varies a little bit just on the year. They're up in anywhere from a foot of water down to about 20, 25 foot of water. Laker. You go along shore, just flipping white jigs to shore like if you were bass fishing. Throw them to shore, hop them back, and it's just a ball. You can catch big numbers of fish. Fighting hard, water's cold, they're prime eating quality. Well, it's a pretty good fight. Good I really recommend people come try it. And you know, if they want to call the Green River Office of the Game of Fish or call the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources Office, we'll be happy to share locations. Yeah. You know, put circles on maps, show them where to go, talk techniques. It just doesn't get any simpler when these fish are up and, and you know, you've got footage of some of the crazy crazy days we've had. Nice. Double? Oh, we doubled up. Nice. They found a little spot. Oh, got him. He was right in shallow, shallow. Bottom? Heck no. <laughs> Plan now to try to be up here. You know, mid-October is almost guaranteed that they're going to be up and spawning and that can carry into November. Uh, it can be pretty hot and heavy. You know, you get these fish riled up, you know, getting in to spawn, they get really aggressive. So, you know, jigging spoons, uh, tubes, stuff like that. I mean, it's not uncommon to catch, you know, 50, 60 fish a day out here when you get into that uh, spawning jigging bite. <laughs> so Shane and I, we're both gonna run uh, half day trips for 350 bucks. Um, that's for two people. We're gonna do a special where you get dinner the night before and breakfast the day of for 500 bucks. Um, that's for two people staying right here at our cabins here on site. TJ and Shane will not only show you how and what to use to catch lake trout, they'll fillet your fish and they've both got really nice safe boats. It's worth the trip up here. So TJ and Shane, they're going to uh, offer this guide trip for 350 bucks, and you guys are going to throw in a, a room and dinner and breakfast for another 150 bucks yeah. for two people. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's a good deal. It'll be a good deal. Yeah, it's, it's that time of the year. It will be a good deal because of the, the, the fish they can take back with them. Yeah. Well, that's why we came out a little early in September to inspire you to come out in October because the fishing is fantastic. So get out here, come to Buckboard Marina. Come visit TJ Shane, have him take you out if you don't have a boat. If not, stop by, say hi, come to dinner on uh, Friday. Is it Friday or Saturday? First Saturday of every month we do uh, seafood, seafood dinner. dinner. Yeah. It's fabulous. Get out here and enjoy some uh, quality fishing. I'm Adam Eagle, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.